Chapter One of Rick and Ruddy. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Allison Hester. Rick and Ruddy: The Story of a Boy and His Dog by Howard Garris. Chapter One: Rick Wants a Dog. Rick Dalton sat on the sandy beach, tossing white stones and bits of shell into the little waves that broke almost at his feet. The tide was just on the turn. Soon it would come in, and the big, booming rollers would drive Rick farther up toward the dunes, where the wind was making a queer whistling sound as it bent the long spears of saw-edged grass, whipping off venturesome gray hoppers that had boldly crawled up perhaps to get a better view of the heaving ocean. "'I don't care,' murmured Rick. But from the tone of his voice and the look on his face, one might have said that he did care, and very much, too, about something. But still, Rick said, "'I don't care,' and he said it over and over, until it was almost like the song the waves seemed to sing as they swished up the beach, rolling over and over the white sand." pebbles and bits of shell swishing them along as if they too didn't care what happened i don't care exclaimed rick again as he tossed a larger stone out so that it fell with a splash near a floating bit of wood and frightened away an osprey that was about to swoop down and catch a sea bass which had ventured too near the surface i want a dog i just want a dog and i think mother might let me have one I don't care. Just why he said that, Rick didn't know, for he did care very much about something, and that was to have a dog. He dug his fingers deep in the sand, scooped up a wet mass of it in his palm, and tossed it high in the air. It fell about him in a little shower, and then, as Rick was about to repeat this, a wave, larger than any of the others, rolled up and nearly wet his feet. And as Rick had on his shoes and stockings, he hastily scrambled back out of the way of the ocean, for salt water is bad for leather, as everyone knows who has ever been to the seashore. Tide's coming in, mused Rick. Must be four o'clock. If I had a dog now. He rose slowly to his feet, looked up and down the beach and out across the sea. In the distance was a smudge of smoke from a coast steamer. I wish I was on her, murmured the boy. If I was, maybe mother'd let me have a dog. There's most always a dog on a ship. Oh, why can't I have a dog? No one answered Rick Dalton. There was no one there to speak, unless, perhaps, it was the fish hawk. And, if he could have talked Rick's language, he might have told the small boy what he thought about him for having spoiled his dinner for the dinner of the osprey depended on his catch of fish and not only his dinner but the dinner of the hungry little whistling birds in the dead pine tree farther inland but all the boy heard was the swish of the waves as they whispered among the bits of shell and white pebbles that and the whistle of the wind in the rank grass that grew atop the sand dunes tide's coming in mused rick four o'clock and i've got to go to the store if I had a dog, he could carry the things for me. Oh, I wish I had a dog. Rick dug the toe of his shoe into the sand, turned for a last look at the ocean, and then trudged over the little hills that bordered the shore, and soon was on his way to the village. It was when he was at home again, after having gone to the store, as his mother had told him to do at four o'clock, when the tide turned, it was then that Rick again voiced his wish. Why can't I have a dog, mother? he asked. I'm old enough now, and lots of the boys have em. Henry Blake, he's got a dog he says I can have. Why can't I have him? Doesn't Henry want his dog any more? asked Mrs. Dalton, as she took the bundle of groceries Rick had brought. No, was the eager answer and Rick seemed to seize on the question as a ray of hope. Oh, can I have his dog? No, Richard, dear, answered his mother gently. I am sorry to disappoint you, but really I don't want you to have a dog. 
just yet. But when may I have one? he asked. Well, perhaps when Maisie gets a little older so I could trust her around a dog. As she is now, she'd just as soon pull a dog's tail or not, or put her hand in his mouth, and she might be bitten. You wouldn't want your little sister to be bitten, would you? No, mother, course not. Henry's dog doesn't bite, and if I could have him, I'd take care of Maisie so she wouldn't pull his tail or anything. Please, mother. Mrs. Dalton shook her head. You might think you could look after Maisie, she said with a smile, but I'd always be afraid, for a while at least. How long before she'll be old enough so I can have a dog, mother? asked Rick. Oh, in a year, perhaps. But I wish you wouldn't tease now, Rick, dear. Bring me a few chips to boil in the kettle. It's almost supper time, and your father will be here soon. If I had a dog, said Rick in a dull, sad sort of voice, I could teach him to bring in a basket of chips every night. It would be a good trick for him. Why, Richard, dear, you don't mind bringing me in a few chips? do you asked his mother oh no mum of course not he answered quickly but it would be a lot of fun if i had a dog and he could bring him in wouldn't it mother it might if he didn't run all over the yard with the basket and spill my wood she answered oh my dog wouldn't do that declared rick he'd be a good dog henry blake's dog is a good one his name is spot and he jumps in Weed River and brings out sticks when him throws em in. Why does Henry want to give away his dog? asked Mrs. Dalton, when Rick had set the basket of chips behind the stove. Cause he's going to move away. Hen's father's going to work over in Bellport at the electric light place, and Hen said I could have his dog. He's going to get a new one. Please, couldn't I? No, Richard, dear. I'm sorry, but really, I'd be worried if you had a dog. I'd be thinking all the while that you or sister were going to be bitten. After you get older, perhaps you may have a dog. Now, go get Maisie for me, please. I want to wash her and get her ready for supper. Rick found his sister playing in the front yard with Mabel Fenton, who lived next door. The two little girls had their dolls and were dressing them up in green leaves, pretending they were new dresses. Oh, Wicky! exclaimed Maisie, which was a pet name for Mary, as she walked around the path with her brother. Oh, Wicky, what do you think? What? he asked. Why, Mabel and I are going to have a doll party tomorrow, and you can come if you want to, Ricky, invited Maisie. I don't want to come to a doll party exclaimed Rick as he tossed a bit of stick up into the air and then hit it with a swiftly thrown stone. Doll party! Pooh! We're going to have real things to eat, not make-believe, went on Maisie. Honest? asked Rick. Honest cross my heart, exclaimed his sister. She was about two years younger than Rick, who was nine going on ten. Um, well, maybe I'll come, said Rick, as if he were giving the favor instead of getting it. Could I bring my dog, Maisie? he asked. Your dog, exclaimed the little girl. You hasn't got any dog, Ricky Dalton. I know I haven't got one now, he admitted very frankly, but maybe I'll get one. I keep on asking mother every day, and maybe she'll let me have one after a while. You wouldn't be afraid of a dog, would you, Maisie? Course not, she answered. Cause maybe I'll get Henry Blake's dog after he moves away, went on Rick. I wish I had a dog. He could bring in chips and go to the store with me. I was down on the beach today, and I just wanted a dog an awful lot. Does dogs ever come up out of the ocean? asked Maisie. Dogs come out of the ocean? Course not, exclaimed her brother. How could they? Well, 
we get wood for the fire out of the ocean it comes up on the beach said Maisie, stopping to look at a little speck of dirt on her doll's nose wood comes out of the ocean and once we got some lemons and coconuts don't you remember yes i remember answered rick but the lemons and coconuts were washed overboard off a ship that sank and some of the coconuts were spoiled sour a dog wouldn't spoil sour if he was in the ocean would he Maisie wanted to know course not laughed rick but dogs couldn't come up out of the ocean and be washed on the beach like the lemons and coconuts a dog could if he was washed overboard off a ship went on Maisie, for having lived all her life near the sea she knew what being washed overboard meant if a dog fell off a ship and come on shore then you could have him couldn't you ricky she asked yes answered her brother slowly but i don't guess that will happen but oh i do want a dog it was after supper that night when rick was playing ball in the vacant lots back of his house and Maisie and the little girl from next door were sitting on the side steps talking about the play party for their dolls the next day that mrs dalton said to her husband i don't know what to do about rick why he hasn't been bad has he asked mr dalton oh no rick is a very good boy his mother answered but he does tease so for a dog a dog exclaimed mr dalton hum yes a dog well i s'pose it's natural for a boy to want a dog i had one when i was a lad did he ever bite you asked his wife no i can't say he ever did that's what i'm so afraid of that if ever rick did have a dog it might bite him or Maisie. and if it did mrs dalton did not finish but she looked at her husband and shook her head good dogs don't very often bite unless they're teased he said and i don't believe rick would tease a dog no but Maisie might she isn't afraid of anything the other day she came in with a little snake she had found out in the yard it was alive too probably a milk or garter snake said mr dalton with a laugh i used to pick em up when i was a boy they're harmless oh dear exclaimed his wife would you really want rick to have a dog she asked hmm, well i don't know he slowly answered a boy and a dog seem to go together somehow but i don't suppose it would do any harm to wait another year if rick teases you too much let me talk to him and oh i wouldn't want to do that i can manage him he's got a notion that henry blake might give away his dog but i don't just like that kind i'd want a shepherd dog i think if i ever let the children have one i don't know much about henry blake's dog spoke mr dalton but i guess we won't let rick have one right away he can wait hello nearly nine o'clock he went on as he looked at his watch in the faint light of the moon which now and then shone through the clouds i'll call the children in rick's finished playing ball long ago i hear him talking with the boys over in the lots we're going to have a storm i guess by the way the old ocean is booming tonight winds in the northeast too oh i don't like northeasters exclaimed mrs dalton the wind gets so terrible yes a september storm can sometimes tear things up pretty badly said her husband as he arose from his seat on the porch well maybe this won't be as bad as they sometimes are rick and Maisie were called in and sent up to bed and then their father and mother sat downstairs to read. The wind freshened, and the beach, where Rick had sat that afternoon, tossing pebbles into the little waves, was covered with white-capped breakers. Maisie, called Rick in a whisper from his room across the hall. Maisie, are you asleep? Almost, she drowsily answered. Are you? No, I 
say, Maisie? Did you, did you ever say your prayers for anything you wanted an awful lot? Like a, like a doll or a pair of roller skates? Yep, I did once, said the little girl. Once I prayed for a doll carriage. Did you get it? asked Rick eagerly. No, but I got a cradle and that was just as good. Why, Rick? Oh, nothing, he answered. Good night. Good night, she murmured sleepily. She prayed for a doll carriage and she got a cradle, mused Rick. I, I wonder if, if I prayed for a dog, if I'd get a cat. He listened to the distant booming of the surf. I, I guess I'll take a chance, he whispered in the dark. End of chapter one.